Ben, can I talk to you for a second? Later, Grandpa. It'd only take a moment. Fine. Fine. What is it? I've got something to show you. Now this diary belonged to my grandfather who fought in the First World War. That was a hundred years ago. It's got nothing to do with me. I just want to be sure that you know what you'll be facing. Now no one in this family has fought in a war since my grandfather. <laughs> Grandpa, you can't compare us. It's a totally different time. The threats we're facing now are so much bigger. I need to fight for something there that I believe in. I'm going to fight for a better world. Well, that was exactly my grandfather's thought. Now look, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I don't want to make decisions for you. I just want you to read it. The rest is up to you. All right. But I'm not going to change my mind. This is my personal duty. November 13th, 1917. We had heard about the Germans burning and murdering their way through Belgium. We couldn't let these immoral beasts reach our homes and families. Our country needed us, and we were promised glory and honour in return. I couldn't wait to get there. Then we arrived at the front. And the promised glory? There's nowhere to be found. We get the damned on her. We were on our own. March 30th, 1918. For the moment we went over the top, my friends started to fall around me. I made it through the initial fire, only to be confronted by a German soldier. This wasn't the snarling demon I'd been told about. He was a man of my own age. The same fear in his eyes. He raised his bayonet, and I gripped mine even tighter. When you're firing from a trench across the wasteland, war can become something distant, impersonal. But in that moment, there are no words for this monstrosity. April 12th, 1918. I got a letter from Mary. I'm now a father. We have a son. I wish this would all end and I could go home and see them. I want to imagine how it would feel holding my newborn son in my arms. But I can't. Not with these arms which are now made for killing. Even with my eyes closed, I still see that man in the trench staring back at me. His fear. 
his suddenly lifeless eyes. Why do we do this? End another man's life in violence and fear. Why must we endure such horrors? We came to fight monsters. We became monsters ourselves. I will never understand. I will never understand that we soldiers who barely know each other. We have nothing against each other, but we are fighting to the death. Nothing in this world can justify this slaughter. Definitely not the glory and honour of our country. This is not the kind of world I want my son to live in. Or any generations to come. <laughs>